I really enjoyed it. It's it's, uh, it's thrill just to go start the well and, and just watch how it works. And uh, uh, you know, instead of wetting the whole ground and melting the clods down to where the ground will blow worse, it just it just wets a little strip unless you're putting a high volume of water on. And uh, when I was started watering cotton back early, you could look across where I was putting on the uh, half inch, and you couldn't even tell us that it was running. The ground looked dry. So uh, the difference in the water on this wide versus the whole, all the top of the ground being wet, that's a tremendous amount of evaporation loss difference. Plus, uh, especially on cotton, you know, if we don't uh, seal the top of that ground over and make that, which makes it blow worse, well, that's a that's another advantage. When I'm putting chemical on, if there's a uh, you know, if the rain fast of the chemical is like eight or 12 hours, well, I can put it on and start the sprinkler immediately behind the spray rig. You know, since we're not wetting the canopy of the crop, we're not washing any of the chemical off, and uh, you know, we're, we can start r immediately behind the sprayer. Which, you know, there's a lot of advantages like that, the small ones, and all those small ones added up to be huge, you know, in the end. Being able to put that uh, small amount of water on and get it down in the root zone is, without all that evaporation loss is, uh, is a big plus. I wouldn't have had any wheel track at all okay. if I hadn't had to go to the sprays. Uh, I don't know yet, but I'm thinking about putting maybe half, half circle sprays on and turning the head back and just let it spray down just for emergence because I can get this ground wet enough pre-watering it that I don't need but a half inch for emergence or maybe three quarters for incorporated chemical. So that's not gonna make much of a wheel track one trip. And that'll be the only only water in that track ever unless I something happens that I go back to the sprays for insecticide or whatever this is what it does it just uh, it just curls this hose up and it just kids right back the other way the opposite direction when you reverse it uh, I've had I have I've had no problem with reversing it I've reversed it planting I reversed it this cotton's probably been sprayed four times I've reversed it spraying uh, it's been reversed several times and uh, no problem. When you're 30 inches apart, I really, it's gonna be definitely better to plant in a circle because that way you're not dragging the hoses across the top of the plant. But as far as the water application, you're still 30 inches. You know, and if that hose is in the center of, of a 30 inch cotton row, it's 15 inches to each side. And if you're dragging across, it's still 15 inches from the dragon line to the center of the next dragon line. So as far as the water application, I can't see that it'd be much difference. But as far as dragging the dragon line across the crop, that's where the difference would be. You know, there's some like uh, southern rust in the corn right now. Uh, if it was, if it was the, that water was put on with the dragon line, that might not uh, provoke the uh, southern rust to set in. Uh, I know cotton doesn't like water sprayed over the top of it, uh, so that's, that's another plus on cotton. And to me, the weaker the water is, the, the better the dragon line will be because it extends your water so much. You can take less gallons and do more with the dragon line than you can the bubble pads or the sprays. And on a windy day, it, you know, that's just a given. It's, uh, it's, it's night and day difference. You know, we've had some 60 mile an hour wind. As a matter of fact, I think one night during the night we had like 70 mile an hour wind. 
all the hoses were right where they were. And if it does blow the hoses around, all you gotta do is start the sprinkler and they'll all just fall back in line like, they're, like they were. So wind is, is no problem for them. I used to farm at Tuya up until 1972 and we just about run out of water down there. That's the reason I moved to Dumas. So unless you've run out of water, you don't know what that's like. Of course, everybody that's getting, their water's getting weaker, they know what's, what it's like. And uh, here we've got a water district and we're only, we can only use an acre and a half foot of water a year. And if you go over the one time, it's just not too bad, but if you go over the second time, it's it's not real good, but that third time is, you won't do it to get the fourth time. So, you know, the fine is severe after third time. So we've got to uh, figure out some way to raise the, the crop, the, you know, the bushels per acre or pounds per acre that we've been raising on less water.